A required practical seven part A with here with Dr. Davies. Hello, Doc. Thank How are you doing? Good. I'm good, thanks. Um, what is the first thing you're going to do when you're meant to do a practical? So the very first thing we have to do is read over your method. Uh, and obviously last night what I did, I did a little pre-lab sheet. So I took the written instructions for my method and I turned it into a diagram showing all the apparatus that I was going to use. Right, and why did you do that? So that's a really good question. Um, the, the job of the pre sheet is to, is to reduce the cognitive load on my brain. I'm an old, old man. Yeah, we can uh, see. And I forget very, very easily. So sure. it's good for me to have this uh, written information as pictures so I can process it more easily. What about young people? Would that help them? Absolutely it would, okay? So these young people these days, like our A-level students, they've got lots of different things going on. So lots of different subjects, right. and lots of things to remember. Right. So a pre-lab sheet helps them to break down this practical method of lots of steps. Perfect. Let's start. What's the first thing you're going to do? Okay, so the first thing that I need to do is I need to rinse my burette with some potassium iodide solution. So I've got Let's a little see. bit of potassium iodide solution here. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to make sure that my burette is closed, that the tap is closed. Okay. Just How do you know that the tab is closed? Quite simply because it's in the horizontal position. Right. Okay. Is there? Good. Okay. Yeah. So very very simply, um, I'm gonna. Uh, I don't have a funnel with me, so I'm very very carefully going to add this from the top. And I'm just going to hold my burette to make sure that it's nice and steady. I'm just going to fill this to the top. Very, very careful with it. Don't wanna... do you, do, you don't want any spillages, yeah, sure. I'm just going to fill that up and then I'll rinse my burette just by opening the tap and letting it all run out. And why? What is that doing? So, um, the job of this is to prepare the burette. So, I'm going to be using potassium iodide later on anyway, mm -hmm. um, but I'm basically rinsing my burette with the solution that I'm going to use to make sure there's no. Well, it's already been cleaned to remove any contamination, um, but if there's any like residue of um, whatever our technicians use to clean it left behind, this potassium iodide will remove any of that. Great. And what do you do in the meantime while this is done? Hello, sir. So what state are we on now? So we've uh, rinsed our burette with potassium iodide and we've also filled it up to a particular level. So lots of students get really caught up with this. They really love filling it right up to the top, but you don't necessarily have to do that. Uh, where does the bottom of the meniscus arrive? It's at 13 point... Actually, no, it's at, it's at exactly... Four... No, it's not. It's 13.5. All oh, right. It's 13.5. So I know that my starting volume um, is 13.5. So it's important to have a note of that. And that's centimetres cubed, by the way. So it's important to have a note of that because I will need to use it later. So uh, the next step in method says to transfer 10 centimetres cubed of hydrogen peroxide solution from the shared burette provided to a clean, dry, 100 centimetre cubed beaker. So here's my clean, dry beaker. And I need to transfer exactly 10 centimetres cubed of hydrogen peroxide. So in order to do this, I've got a choice. So I've got, in my equipment, I've also got a 25 centimetre cubed um, measuring cylinder. But I'm not going to use that. I'm going to use the smaller one mm -hmm. because it's better for measuring smaller volumes. All right. Measuring smaller volumes more accurately. Perfect. So I'm going to use this one. And I'm going to measure it out. Again, I'm going down to eye level. So that I can read the volume with more care. So just so that I understand what you're doing, you're waiting until you go close to 10 and yeah. then you're adding drop by drop, is that right? Yeah, that is absolutely true. So um, I, I can add up to around 9 centimetres cubed with uh, a lot of confidence. Mm -hmm. And then from then I go very, very slowly, one drop at a time. And again, I'm looking for the bottom of the meniscus to line up with the grade for... There, good. There we go. Right. And then... yeah, definitely. So the, the meniscus sits on 10. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. So then this goes into our 100 centimeter cube beaker. Mm -hmm. And we are going to use this uh, later on. So what was that again? 
So that was the hydrogen peroxide. Right, and how do you make sure that you don't get confused? Yep. The way I do it is I, um, I just make sure that um, I put all of the equipment that I've used for different chemicals in front of the bottle. I right. can also label them, but I don't have labels with me right now, so I'm just going to use that as a, as a quick technique, okay? Um, I'm going to use this later, I'm going to add this later on, so for now I'm just going to put that in front so that I know where my hydrogen peroxide is. Uh, and next it tells me to measure out uh, 25 centimetres cubed of sulfuric acid mm. to a clean, uh, dry... Sulfuric acid, let's see where sulfuric acid is... here! Yep. Right. So. I now need 25 centimetres cubed of this. So, um, to measure this out, I'm going to use a funnel because it will take me a very, very long time to measure it all with a dropping pipette. So again, I'm going to do what I did earlier. I'm going to add up until 20, let's say, with a lot of confidence. Um, but from there, I'm going to slow it down. And why did you take the, the funnel off? Uh, oh, good. So, so it's really important to remove the funnel because what can happen if I leave the funnel in as I'm measuring out um, using my dropping pipette, then what might happen is that some extra drops can drop in from the funnel which haven't dropped down yet. Right. Uh, and, and that can mean that our volume goes over, for example. Oh, right. Okay. So I'm just going to add a few more drops of my acid. Oh, I might need a little bit more. And again, I'm going to look for the meniscus to line up with the bottom. Sorry, the bottom of the meniscus, I should say, to line up with the uh, grade for 25. I think that looks good. Yep, it does. Okay. And then I'm going to add this to my um, 250 centimeter cubed beaker. So in it goes. I'm going to put this back in front of the sulfuric acid so that I know exactly what I've done. Very, very okay. tidy in there. Yeah, good. Um, so next I've got to add some uh, distilled or deionized water. I need 20 centimeters cubed of this. And I'm going to um, open up the bottle. Uh, given this is deionized water, I don't mind so much if I spill it. And I haven't got a clean funnel with me, so I'm just going to add this. Again, I'm going to add with confidence up to about just over 15. And I'm going to use the um, use the bottle to fill up the rest. So the bottle gives you lots of control, and you can carefully fill it up to twenty, just like that. Okay, and this goes into the beaker as well. So the purpose of the deionized water is to dilute um, our solution. Uh, and next, we've got. Um, Use a plastic dropping pipette to add about one centimeter cube of starch solution to this beaker. Right. So it's about one centimeter cube of starch solution. So we don't have to be too precise about this. So we can use the gradings uh, on the on the pipette. And I can see that one centimeter cubed is is you know probably roughly about a centimeter in length on this. All right. So if I just add that until I see about a centimeter disappear, mm -hmm. should be should be more than enough. Okay, and then the final thing, so um, use your burette to add five centimetres cubed of potassium iodide solution to the mixture. So I said before that we were actually, uh, it said for the starch, add about one centimetre cubed, but now it's telling me to add five centimetres cubed from the burette. The reason for that is because what I'm adding from the burette is our um, independent variable. Mm -hmm. So we want to be very, very careful with our measurement of this because this is going to affect results so we shouldn't um mess this up no we've got to get this one quite right. perfect okay. okay so i look at my starting volume so i worked it out earlier and it was 13.5 mm -hmm. centimeters cubed yep so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to think okay so i'm going to add five centimeters cubed it starts at 13.5 so if i add five to that we should be at 18.5 so i'm going to okay. add and open this tap and add it until we get to uh 18.5 so again what i'm going to do is i'm going to slowly open the tap until it starts to flow and the good thing about the burette is that it does offer quite a lot of control I'm going to let about four centimeters flow out with quite a lot of confidence and then at this point here i'm just going to try and slow it down as much as i possibly can and remind myself 18.5 the number that we're after. So now I'm trying to add it a drop at a time until we get to this point there. 
I think that the bottom of the meniscus is resting at 18.5, so I think that should be okay. Right, perfect. Okay. There's a final drop that's, if you can see this, there's a, there's a drop that's kind of sitting at the end. now. And what do you do with it? Well, the burette already thinks that we've added this. Yeah, so, we, you, so we, we might as well. A, yeah, we might as well. Um, so what we can do, we can gently maybe tap the burette. Right. Very, very gently, hopefully it will drop down. There we go. Perfect. Okay. Okay, so we've got all of those things uh, into our uh, beaker, uh, and then the final step is to add five centimeters cube of sodium thiosulfate solution from the shared burette provided. So sodium thiosulfate, I need five centimeters cubed. So uh, we don't have a shared burette because it's only me um, doing this one, and I've, actually I've already measured it out. So I've already measured it out to be five. Actually, let me just confirm that. Do you agree that's five? Uh, isn't it a little bit um, above I five? Right. I think I think actually the, the, the bottom of the meniscus is a little bit above five. Yeah, I think the bottom of the meniscus is above. Yeah, it's a little so bit. So I think above. we should I think we should remove a little bit. Yeah. Right. So sure how do you do that? So I, I can do the reverse um, by pinching the top mm -hmm. of the um, of the uh, dropping pipette and then dropping it in and then removing a little bit. Now you need to add one. And now I need to add a little bit more, so I add some back. So I just add it back, drop by drop. Yep, there we go. Okay. Good. I'm going to put my sodium thiosulfate back, and then I add this uh, to my solution. I've got to make sure that this is added last. Okay. And there it is. Okay. So now what I need to do is I need to stir my entire solution for a little bit to make sure that it's really well mixed. Yeah. Okay. And then what I'm going to do, so this next step is where we're going to actually record the time. So I've got to be very, very careful here. I've got to do essentially three things at once. I'm going to add in my hydrogen peroxide. This is going to be quite a quick reaction, or it could be. Okay. I'm going to add this. I'm going to also very, very quickly start the timer. And I'm also going to try and mix it really quickly, just at the beginning. I don't want to mix it for the entire time, but just at the beginning. Okay. Right. So I'm going to add, start the clock and mix. So you probably need one hand on the clock, right? Yeah, I probably would actually need one hand on the clock. Right. And so here we go. So I add, start the clock, and then I mix, and I keep an eye on it, and I'm going to look for a very, very distinct colour change. Now, woo, that was quick. Isn't it? I, I, and you can see that with an experiment like that, with quite a high concentration, um, you need to be quite alert. And you need to be ready to, to press stop. You need to be watching it all the time. Mm. Uh, we don't need like a white cross underneath it uh, for this particular one because we've got a very, very distinct color change. Okay? We see it go from colorless to a kind of black color very, very quickly. Thank you. Okay, so um, my reaction is finished. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to um, pour the contents down the sink. And I'm going to rinse. And I'm going to put this back in the tray so that our um, great team of technicians can clean it up for the next experiment. Obviously, I've got to also record my um, time as well. So uh, in my table, I'm going to write down the concentration of the potassium iodide, and I'm also going to record the time. Uh, I'm also going to make sure that I um, use the correct format. So this is giving this is a digital stop clock, so it's giving me the time to. Uh, two decimal places, so it's 10.67 seconds. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to record it 10.67. Okay. Oh, okay. And that's it. So, next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to repeat those exact same steps, but I'm going to slightly change the concentration of the potassium iodide by using a different volume uh, of potassium iodide from the burette and a different volume of deionized water. Perfect. And you're going to do that for how many? So for this, we've got five different concentrations of potassium iodide. So you're going to repeat this process for five times? Yeah, yeah. Great. Um, and I'm going to compare the time taken for that colour change to happen in each one. And that's going to tell me something about the rate of reaction. Okay, thank you very much.